So I've just docked into Taiwan, Taipei, and this is the beautiful city of Computex. We will be filming that a little bit later, but today we're gonna to be taking a look at how to fix your graphics card if you are in this magical city. Now behind me is Gigabyte and Aorus, and also behind them is MSI. Now I just happen to have three faulty graphics cards on hand. That is a GTX 1050 Ti, a GTX 960, and also a GTX 1070. But I'm told the best thing about these places is, is if that they don't fix your card, then you have to pay no fee at all. So they're automatically talking my language. And yes, I did get a little bit of sleep. So that means there is gonna be a lot more used price performance content coming to your sub box before Computex actually begins. With that aside, let's check out the faulty pouch of hardware and then see what's wrong with it or what I think is wrong with it and then go in and try and get it repaired. And then after that, we're also gonna try and get some other electronics that I have on hand, either replaced or repaired as well. So here's the three cards here. The first one is a Gigabyte GTX 1050 Ti. Now this just gives out no signal at all. So I'm very curious to see if they can fix the, I guess the number one common problem of a faulty GPU and that is just everything looks fine, nothing's gone up in smoke, but it just doesn't give out a signal at all. Sometimes this can happen where the fan just spins up uh, fully from when you start the PC or sometimes it can look like it's operating normally, but again, no signal. Then beside that, we've got a card with the exact same problem. This is the MSI GTX 960. And then beside that, this one here, I do believe they can fix this easily because what happened was uh, I got this from a client who returned a PC and it had a backplate on it. And when I took that backplate off, it had two of the SMDs on the back were burnt up. So that's probably an easy fix. I'm hoping at the very least they can fix this since it is a GTX 1060 and apparently they only charge 40 US dollars to fix these graphics cards if they manage to fix them. So we're gonna go inside the stores which are literally just two steps away and see what they say. So they're not gonna fix the MSI card. They need a telephone number, but you only have an Aussie number. So they're asking what happened with this card, and I just told them. But um, and if you guys remember from the last parts hunt, Marco, he helped us out because he can speak the language here. And so he's sort of doing a bit of translation. So apparently it's seven business days. So that's why I got in really early with this because again, this vlog will sort of conclude if I just get enough time to get these cards back before I go back to Australia. So that's why I budgeted the time and I said like, this is probably cool. We get these graphics cards fixed if we can. Now, the good thing is, is that these cards apparently are still under warranty. Even though I don't have the receipts, the official uh, support center here will fix them for free, which is absolutely awesome considering everything else. So if this does go through, I'll be over the moon. Now this one here, pss, this one here, no, pss, just a little, it's got my info instead. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so you you Okay. Yeah, just sign, yep. Yeah. Just yeah. sign there, yep. Sign your life away. Okay. While you're filming it, come on. Yes. They, they're really cool. They, could, they said I could film in here, guys, so don't worry. I know there's some people in the comments like, you shouldn't put a camera in their face. It's like, I asked them first. Okay, I mean, here, one But we know how to trigger people. We'll just put a camera in her face. And we just got out of the Gigabyte Service Center and that was really good news because hopefully both those graphics cards will come back fixed and they won't cost me anything at all. That's hoping, fingers crossed. But since we're right next door with the MSI store, let's just go in there and see if they can fix that GTX 960. Okay. This one we need to get a number. Okay. So press the button on the Okay. 
So we just got out of the MSI repair center and they were going to charge 27 US dollars to fix up that GTX 960. But one thing about that was they were really reluctant to accept the graphics card because it wasn't bought within Taiwan. And another thing I've learned from this is that if you don't have someone that speaks Chinese, then you're going to have very little chance of getting your parts RMA or fixed. So, especially in the case of the MSI store, like they did not speak one word of English and I'm lucky I had Marco. If you guys don't remember, Marco uh, was featured last year in Computex Used Parts Honey. He basically speaks fluent uh, Chinese and so it was really good having him around, uh, except he's a little bit shy to appear on camera this time around due to all the uh, positive comments he got in the last year's parts hunt. But to tally that up with those three graphics cards, we've got two gigabyte cards that are looking like they'll get fixed for free if they manage to come back in time. And then the GTX 960 from MSI that hopefully will get fixed. If it doesn't, it's no cost. If it does, it's $27. But you're probably wondering where I am at the moment. I'm in a very big district, uh, popular electronics store in Taiwan called the Guanghua Electronics District. And here's where I'm gonna try and get some repairs on my microphone. Besides that, I'm also gonna try and get some faulty parts, which I don't have receipts for or anything like that, just like the graphics cards. I'm gonna take them to the manufacturers here. And especially in the case of faulty RAM, I'm going to see if they do adhere to that lifetime warranty that we always hear about when you buy some of these parts. With that aside, let's get rolling. Oh yeah, and so many, so many lovely comments from last year. But you don't need it exactly right this second, right? He can, he's quick. Okay. Yeah, he's quick. So last year I came to this exact store and they fixed me up with a custom cable for recording for Computex. It's actually a lifesaver. So I knew straight away to come back here again. Now what we've got here is an old 1980s vintage Japanese uh, broadcaster mic. Now I picked this up on a deals hunt quite a while ago, but you guys have been complaining about the gold mic saying you don't like it and it's time for a change and I think it's time for a very so I think I got this one for about $10, but the thing is on the used market, they go for over $150, I believe. So I'm not too sure, but I have tested out the vocal properties with an adapter already, and it does sound pretty damn good, as well as having good noise rejection. It does take a AA battery as well underneath that, and it is required to get that to work on my standard uh, cameras, whether it be a DSLR or the one that I'm using now, which is just the standard vlog cam. And here's the original jack. So this is a quarter inch jack, and we're gonna not only shorten the cable, but we're also gonna change that over to a 3.5 millimeter that will natively plug into my camera right now. And you can see here, just on the fly, the service is so good. They're pretty much just soldering on the new ends. And like I said, just early before, last time I got a cable here, it was, it's just been rock solid. It lasts for so long and they just do a really good job of making everything work. And of course it doesn't break the bank at all. So awesome. And of course, if you guys have followed me for a while, you know that I can't solder for jack. So this is going to solve one problem very quickly and we'll give it a quick test as well. Testing one, two, this is the new broadcaster mic for Computex. And I believe it is working because the volume bars on the camera are moving and we are getting signal on both the left and the right. Also quickly let us know in the comments section below, are you enjoying this vlog? And are you enjoying the new vintage 1980s microphone? So we're now back in Australia and I tested out these three graphics cards that I got fixed up. And the 1050 Ti, it works absolutely fine. But one interesting thing about this card is that it says M9 bad on the card itself. So I'm not sure what that means. If someone out there in the audience knows what M9 bad means, I'd actually love to know. Another cool thing about this card was when I was at the repair center, they had this actually giving out a signal initially. And when I first saw it, I was like, no way. Because before I do deem a card faulty or bad, I do test it out in a variety of situations. And just when I was there, I said to them, can you please run a benchmark on this uh, GTX 1050 Ti? And so they started up heaven and it wouldn't even boot. And then, and then the card just crashed out. And then after that, it wouldn't give out a signal at all. So then they said, okay, we've got to repair this thing. 
and ship it off and then it came back about five days later. Same with the GTX uh, 1070, but in the case of the 1070, they didn't even fix it up. They just gave me a whole new card and it had a new backplate on it because I didn't bring the backplate with me because I thought it wasn't needed. And so there must have been more to that card than meets the eye because I thought it was just two faulty resistors on the back, but obviously there might have been a bit more wrong with the car because they just replaced it entirely. And that card too is now on the test bench. It's working 100%. It's all good to go. And I did take off the plastic wrapping after everything worked, just for those people who got OCD about it. And then last up here, we had the GTX 960, and this came back all okay as well, just like the other two cards. But MSI also replaced the faulty fan blade. It wasn't really faulty, it was just missing a fin, and they replaced that entirely. And the funny thing about these uh, fan blades is that they do cost a bit on the new market. So it was good to see that they not only fixed the card, but they also replaced the fan blade for 25 US dollars roughly, I think. It was about 800 NT dollars, so I'll quickly put the transfer prices up here for you guys you get an idea of how much it costs but overall we had three faulty cards that came in and three cards that are pretty much brand new come out and that's a really good thing because it gives sort of an option for people on what to do with their faulty cards instead of sticking them in the oven which i know a lot of us have tried in the past and pretty much the hit rate on that is really pretty low in my experience so you can get them to come back to life but in a lot of cases i think there's more to a faulty graphics card than just the gpu die itself in a lot of the cases in terms of m9 i'm not sure what that means and in the case of this msi board i'm pretty sure they did not replace the gpu die i'm pretty sure it was something else on the card that was faulty and so it really hit home with me when these cards are made in taiwan and it makes sense if you've got a faulty card to then go get it fixed in Taiwan. Because I think if you're in America, Australia, or UK, for example, and you go to a repair center there, they sometimes ship it all the way back to Taiwan anyway, and it gets repaired there and then shipped back to you. And of course, the transit times can be uh, pretty bad. And in the case of the card, if it's actually out of warranty, then they'll probably charge you a lot more as they otherwise would have charged you if you were in Taiwan. And in case of fixing the GTX 960, $25 is actually a pretty good price. GTX 1050 Ti and also GTX 1070 getting fixed for free is, uh, needless to say, one of the best bargains of my life, considering I picked these up on the used market. In the case of the 1050 Ti, I thought I got hosed, but Gigabyte and the service made it so I didn't get hosed and I got a really good deal in the end. And in the case of that 1070, that was a faulty card that came back. I've already replaced it for the person who bought a PC off me. But ultimately, it's a really good experience. I know my expressions on my face and the way I'm talking probably isn't as excited as I should be, but that's because I just got back from Combitex and that was just nine days of straight, uh, full-on burnout. Maybe if you see a faulty card, and especially if it's something like a GTX 10 series card or a new uh, Radeon card or something like that, and it says faulty and it's going for really cheap, then you can pick that up. And if you're in Taiwan or in that area, then those service centers are really good to deal with. Though I will state in the case of MSI, I did have Marco there and he did speak Chinese. And I think if he didn't speak Chinese, they wouldn't have taken the uh, turn in and they wouldn't have repaired the card. So that is something to come out of that. So if you do go to Taiwan, make sure you've got a friend who's local and who can take you to the service center and just uh, organize the uh, RMA and get the card fixed. As case of Gigabyte service, that was really top notch. It was a different experience and they didn't know who I was when I walked in there. They were just really friendly and they like were really receptive and helped me out and said, okay, these cards are actually still under warranty technically and we'll fix them for free for you. And I was like, wow, that's really cool service. So the case of Gigabyte it was awesome. I think you could have got away if you didn't speak Chinese, but in the case of the MSI service center, you definitely want someone uh, there who can speak the local language. But also in regards to the other faulty parts I had with the faulty memory, the faulty SSD and stuff like that, I just did not get time to go to those service centers and initiate the RMA as I ran out of time during Computex. So I would have loved to have updated you guys on that, but keep in mind, I do believe the service for repairing parts in Taiwan is actually really good, at least what came out of these graphics cards here, because these are more expensive units than memory. So I imagine they wouldn't have a problem repairing SSDs and things like memory as well. But anyway, guys, that's it for today and repairing GPUs in Taiwan, massive success. If you guys have any stories of your own about repairing parts or you got any questions, be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. 
And if you enjoyed this one, as always, hit that like button for us and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. Go back in time.